The following you are about to see is pre-release footage. This is not representative of the final product. This video is technically sponsored by Square Enix, as they invited me out to the Media Tour event. Final Fantasy is a registered trademark of Square Enix. People have been asking a lot for me to make a video of my opinions of the live letter information. I kind of tried to be non-committal because, well, why bother giving my opinions of that when I could tell you my opinions from playing the jobs? So if I committed or didn't commit or even entirely ignored your comment, this is why. Even if I didn't get invited, I probably would have waited for this info, but we're not living in that universe. So let me give you my opinions on each job. The order is based on how I have my gear sets placed on my hotbars. I should have timestamps to make it clear where each job is, or even do it all without saying the word blow a billion times like most people do. And one other note, this is not the final build for the graphical update. Textures for areas are likely all final, but stuff like facial features may not all be there. This is even a build that was a few weeks old. Consequently, some hats on female Hrothgar do not exist it seemed. Others, they did exist, but the hats were turned off in the character panel. Unsure if by default, or if Xenos did that. Before I go into specifics, I want to talk about the consolidation of buttons. When they changed Mirage Dive to be Force Consolidated in Early Endwalker, I hated it. That was a terrible change. It was either too sensitive, causing you to Mirage when you didn't want to, or had delay so large it made the opener for Dragoon in Dragonsong Reprise physically impossible without, like, perfect ping. I said the only way for this to work was to be an opt-in. And they did exactly that, and I love it. You can't consolidate every button so that you have, like, 12 buttons total. Combos are still broadly forced to be different buttons. Now you can opt into both combining the buttons and adding a delay where applicable. This allows everyone a level of customization for every individual job and every individual skill consolidation. When looking at the skill window, you will see a button on the skill being combined into. The skill that gets consolidated will have a little icon within the skill icon. This maybe could be a little bigger for visual clarity, but otherwise, yeah, this is near perfect. If you don't like something being combined, don't. If you want more stuff combined, do it. No matter how much the elitists keep complaining that accessibility is bad, this is an awesome change for everyone. I also would like to say I like the changing of making specific skills give a charge of their special, rather than simply increasing gauge. In my mind, it allows you to pull resources even more than before. This is going to benefit the power and how busy you can make things. Thinking to say, ultimate, many jobs will be pulling resources for the next phase of the fight when a DPS check has safely been overcome. This change allows you to safely pull more often and with less waste. Even when optimal, a little bit of waste just feels bad mentally, even when you wouldn't have even gotten another burst by the end of the fight. Waste is reduced and it just feels nicer. In practice, maybe it does just lower the complexity of resource management. I prefer to look at it from an optimistic point of view. Time will tell, though. Now we can start talking about individual jobs. Monk got the short end of the stick in the live letter with how it was described. I was very skeptical with the new UI element and how removing uncertainty was phrased. In practice, they definitely removed uncertainty. Not because of the UI element, but because buttons glow. All you have to do is follow the glowy buttons. Once we have final potencies, we can math out which glowy buttons to prioritize. I'm in two minds about this. Monk definitely felt like the hardest job in the game, partly thanks to the core rotation being as it was. Beast Chakra on top of it made it even more difficult. As much as Monk has often been a hard sell to me personally, I never felt like this was a problem, that it was poor design or something to fix. It's just what Monk is, and that's fine. The changes to the riddles is definitely a welcome one. Fire's reply definitely is going to be a key element with openers. At the very least, I feel this new 2-3-4 ratio of buffs is going to play very well with the overall toolkit. I'm going to have to play the job in the live version to really get a feel for the new system, and if I like it. I might be able to handle the base rotation easier, but that doesn't inherently make a job more fun. 
Dragoon I was doom posting about because of a mix of factors. First was the long ago comment of Yoshida saying, Dragoon is too busy. I made an entire video explaining how I feel that is the whole identity of the job. Removing OGCD buttons without replacements affects this fundamental fact. So the replacement buttons we saw in the live letter, I was not convinced due to that Yoshida quote. Secondly, the removal of gaze management. People really underestimate the flexibility Dragoon has, with the flexibility being centered on gaze from Mirage Dive. In Dragon Song Reprise, a Dragoon will do high jump as their very first action, often even slightly early pulling because of a very tight window to get two dives within the 31-32 second opening phase. There are many more examples I can go into, but point is there's a lot of depths that can go into gaze based on fight pacing. You could break from the usually strict order of Gerskogol, high jump, barrage dive, and at least get one extra use of Life of the Dragon. How do I feel Dragoon is now that I've played it? They didn't make it less busy. It's just as busy, or even busier. I know the quote is very, very, very old at this point. Things can change. Feedback can happen. But when you also look at Astrologian, which did get the promised rework, I was not sure. Reducing upkeep outside of the opener doesn't exactly make it less busy, when the busy parts are the opener. The part that people are cheering most on is the fact that Dragoon will be able to go into Life of the Dragon at the start of fights. To me, it's a pointless ask, but you do you. There was an easy way to do this without removing gaze entirely. It's called Make Dragoon Start the Duty with a Full Gaze, like Paladin and Sage. We didn't need to delete the entire mechanic, especially when Life of the Dragon is going to occur just as often as always. So I'm kinda bummed we lost a mechanic for no reason, but the core job is nearly exactly the same. It's just weird that now the only purpose of our job gauge is to track Wormwind Thrust. The timer itself matters less than ever. You still are aiming to fit everything into the 20 second buff window of Lance Charge. That's your timer, not the Life of the Dragon timer, Lance Charge. And by the time you start Life of the Dragon, you've already lost a few seconds on Lance Charge, making the Life timer even less relevant. The new skills look and feel cool, but give me time to play with it in the live release before I give any final opinions. But currently, I feel like this is just a step backward. Did they become afraid of shaking things up after people were negative about the Dragoon quote? I maintain a major rework could do the job good as long as the busy core is kept. This, this feels like fear, which makes the Black Mage changes all the stranger. Back in the old days of Final Fantasy XIV, I felt that Hutan existing was a key part of Ninja. Even with Armor Crush, it wasn't just free real estate. Over the years of adding more stuff, more mechanics, and then finally Horizon, I feel the relevance of Hutan falling further and further back. Skill as a player definitely has been a deciding factor as well. In Endwalker, Hutan feels easier to manage than Blood of the Dragon ever was, and before it was removed, it was basically non-existent. So on paper, this rework is exciting, and at least makes the levels before Armor Crush more interesting. In practice, it feels almost pointless. It's there so your filler phase isn't just spamming 1, 2, 3 always and giving multiple positionals. Given how they removed a positional from Dragoon for no reason, they don't care about those at all. It's just to not be 1, 2, 3. At the very least, there might be a tiny bit of depth of pooling to use during burst phases, even though only Aeolian uses it. As far as the new stuff, I liked it all. New animations are really cool and sound cool. The new button after TCJ is surely not going to make ninjas scream in any more pain than they already were, right? Right? Well anyway, AoE trick attack. That's all you need to tell me to get excited. Though as I later realized in editing, that tooltip isn't clear on if the trick effect hits everything. It might only do it on the main target. Samurai is a job I personally feel has gotten less fun as time goes on. And no, Kaiten being removed is not a reason why. It's a symptom that has been happening since Stormblood. Hagakure used to be stronger than using Madare. 
They then cut the Kenki generation in half to turn it into a utility skill. In its place, we got Iki Shoten, which doesn't even interact with Sen. We lost Saigon, Garen and Senai went from a 50 Kenki cost to 25, and only then was Kaiten removed. People insist Kaiten made you need to think even the tiniest bit about gauge management, even in Endwalker. I just don't agree. When everything is low cost and the same cost, management is not that deep. So do the changes fix this? A little, I guess? Iki Shoten's 50 gauge is now completely dedicated to Zanshin, so Garen and Sanai are going to need Kenki you naturally generate, and far more often. It... it's something? I would say it's about the same as Kaiten. It doesn't really mean much compared to where we started. Making sure to have the Kenki available the moment Sanai comes off of cooldown is a much more strict situation than the up to three GCDs of space you had to get enough Kenki for a Kaiten use. But, eh, I don't really feel like Kenki is ever going to go back to feeling like it had depth to me. The core rotation, though, I'm fine with. I don't think it needs wild tune-ups. Yet. Zanshin is nice. Tendo skills actually mix up the pace of the rotation, maybe. Shoha's being combined at least saves a button slot. Given how tightly tuned the 60 rotation of Samurai is, I do wonder how things will feel overall and how that strict timer is going to be. Reaper doesn't have much added. It's still Reaper. Some chunky new skills, an extra OGCD to make Enshroud even busier, and Perfectio. Perfectio. That's an amazing name. It's perfect. But yeah, no, I don't have much to say about Reaper overall. Reaper is fun, and it's still fun. It has no problems, though I'm sure some people would have liked more changes. People were assuming with the low button count, there would be so much room for design space. Viper's thoughts will be over in the dedicated Viper and Pictomancer video. Check that out after this. It's also in a playlist. Paladin is... the same? Even next to Reaper, it's even more the same. Like, new animations are fun, but the only real things that changed are your 2-minute, AoE wreck, and the capstone. An extra OGCD? Cool. That does make the rotation a little bit more involved. AoE wreck feels better in trash and is easier to use with the range. Then, assuming the potency is the same, the shield potency is pretty good on Guardian. It's about a 20% HP shield. Use clemency a few times to get a feel for how much it does. At that point, though, I'm just like... Describing the changes? It's boring. Which I can't even say for Dark Knight's changes. It's just... Boring. Warrior arguably is the biggest winner of the tanks. Really putting the Unga into the Bunga. And the regen on Damnation? Alone, this would probably be a pretty underwhelming effect, even at the current potency. But Warrior just gets more and more regens. Warrior really is solidifying itself with regens. Will we be getting more in 8.0? Stronger ones? It's already insane, but holy crap, we just get more. Then the new skills and animations? God damn, they're just so crunchy and fun. The new Inner Chaos is a surprise. Both primal skills are cool. They're so crunchy and flashy and just so fun to use. I tend to use Warrior just for hunt credit, but I might want to actually tank more to play with these new skills. Dark Knight is terrible and awful now. How dare they make Enhanced Unmed no longer take time off of the plunge cooldown. 0 out of 10 design. Well, more seriously, I do find it weird how two tanks lost their dashes and two kept them. It is technically now a difference between them, with Dark Knight and Gunbreaker being the more DPS-like and busy openers. The combination of Blood Weapon and Delirium into one skill further reduces how busy the opener is. Personally, I am fine with the Delirium combo, but I wonder how Dark Knight mains feel about this. They might feel like the busy opener is part of the job identity like I do with Dragoon. It's not like I could blame them if they did. What I am most surprised is Living Shadow not costing Gage. Unlike Kenki and Kaiten, Blood Gage is pretty hard to boost up, even with Blood Weapon. High cost and more attention needed. So removing the cost is a pretty huge change in the context of Dark Knight. I really do like the new skill with Esteem, though. It looks cooler than the Delirium skills. 
On the bright side, XCOG on Shadowed Vigil is a really good buff. If there is ever a buster you barely survive with a follow-up auto or more multi-hit busters, that XCOG can come in clutch. Gunbreaker is summed up pretty well by the one meme I saw. It's the picture of a moon hitting the earth with the new skill description, and the caption, this will likely change the rotation somewhat. But in practice, and with the removal of Rough Divide, I'd say it's a lot slower now. It's a new, but slow button. You don't use continuation during it. Where I usually see people talk about the busy Dark Knight opener in a negative light, people call Gunbreaker DPS-like in a positive way. The animations are really cool, but how busy the job feels has gone way down to me. So I worry how it's going to feel after the cool factor wears off. Something I don't worry about for Warrior's new skills. Great Nebula, though? That's really good. No variance in how much it will be worth. You know exactly what you're getting. It pairs really well with Heart of Corundum. I like it. Even if 20% is about 1,000 potency of healing like Paladin and Dark Knight get, I am most excited about this one. People will be excited for White Mage to get more attack buttons. Real units will be excited to have an AoE attack option that doesn't overlap with tanks using their invuln for trash mobs. I will always say it, tank ultimates are not for emergency. They are godly tools for dealing with trash mobs in leveling dungeons. Being able to Benediction after the Gunbreaker pops Super Belide, and being able to spam Glare 4 instead of Holy, to then spam Holy once Super Belide wears off, that is what excites me most. Divine Caress? It's nice. I'm glad the buff to activate it is not the same time limit as Temperance, so you can technically use it for the next mechanic. It forces you to use Temperance first, but allows even a little bit of flexibility of using it now or later. That is appreciated. It's no secret that I hate Scholar. These changes do not make me any more keen on liking it. Expedient still exists and remains a skill I hate more than Undraw. This only added more jank. An AoE dot on Chain? That's cool. Chain still not being AoE is awkward. The new fairy mode? The delay in it properly activating feels bad. I do not like Scholar. This makes me like Scholar even less. Unlike Expedient, the power of this skill is pure positive. Lack of power isn't what makes me dislike Scholar. Awkwardness and awful effects like forcing Sprint in the middle of a precise action is my issue. Delete the speed boost. Awful effect. Astrologian cards going back toward the original system is an instant win. They removed all randomness in cards in Shadowbringers. We haven't had random cards in five years. Removing all fake random elements now? Pure positive. Pretending cards are currently random is just lying to yourself. You draw damage up and only damage up. We're leaving any and all pretense behind. This also kind of proves the point against anyone saying we can't go back to the old system because TP doesn't exist anymore. They're making excuses. They changed Spire and Ewer effects. That's all that was needed. This new system doesn't really help reduce buttons, which is the one downside. But like, the blow issue was mostly in that you needed so many buttons when dealing with one card at a time. Having three cards at once that you can use in any order? Multiple buttons makes far more sense. The part I can empathize on is anyone disappointed that Astro is going to be far less busy with card management. I hated it, but I can understand people liking having to go John Madden just to get all the cards out, even without redraw. Astrodyne and anything involved with it, though? No, the fact it is gone is an inarguable good. Sage already played super well, and I loved it. The tools we get out of Dawn Trail are really awesome. The AoE attack? That's nice. But yo, check out that Eucrasian Disgrasia. That is interesting. It would be insane if the final potency of it is worth doing on single target. People have been asking for Miasma 2 and Arrow 3 to come back, so there we go. Absolute insanity if it stays 400 potency. I'm even more excited for Philosophia's AoE Cardia, though. The healing buff? Yeah, that's really strong, too. 20% is a big boost to both you and your co-healer. But considering the arguments about whether Fairy or Cardia is better, 
at the worst, this guarantees you top the team off while you try to push damage. This is just so exciting to me. One thing I forgot to check is if Soteria was updated too. Does Soteria actually boost this one, or is it strictly Cardia? That might be a bit too strong if it does. Cardia and Philosophy are already stacked. Allowing Soteria to also work on the Philosophy buff? Maybe too good. But we'll see. We'll see. Black Mage lost Sharp Cast. Do I need to say more? I'm pretty sure Black Mage mains are going to despise this. There were far more changes than I expected, and that many changes is going to make waves. For the rest of us, Black Mage might be the biggest win of the entire expansion. That is how much I was enjoying myself with Black Mage. It just felt good. I might actually try to put more time into learning Black Mage and Dawn Trail. I never could really pinpoint the problem I had with the job these days. Turns out I didn't like Sharpcast. Maybe it's just the amazement of that being what they chose to remove. And once the honeymoon phase is over, I'll go back to disliking Black Mage. Until then though, I'm actually really excited to try it out more. Summoner is probably the biggest loser of the expansion. Where Paladin is boring in what it got, Summoner's lack of changes is really disappointing. One of the main defenses for the extreme simplification of the rotation was that there was now a huge amount of room for changes and building on what was a fun base. We alternate Demi Summons, why not also alternate Gems? Ruby, Topaz, and Emerald from Bahamut, Sapphire, Amethyst, and Diamond from Phoenix to give Leviathan, Rama, and Shiva. Make those have different effects too. Maybe have Leviathan give Dropsy, and then you do Rama for more damage, or Shiva for a slow effect on Trash. Leviathan wouldn't have a Gemshine attack at all, putting the focus on how it is a multi-purpose combo. I don't know, armchair development idea to make the new summons be uniquely different. An example of how to change up the rotation while still keeping the same base. Solar Bahamut, meanwhile, is not what anyone expected. It's just another Demi. An extremely strong one, but just another Demi. I like that he also comes with a heal. It's both the power of Bahamut and healing a Phoenix in one. But now we're back to the pre-rework issue I heard many, many times. Summoner has a four minute rotation you can't die in or everything is ruined. First you do Solar Bahamut, then Bahamut, then Solar Bahamut, then at minute three of the rotation will be Phoenix. At minute four, you've finally looped. Dying between using Bahamut and your second Solar Bahamut means you miss out on the strongest part of your rotation, since Phoenix has to be stronger than Bahamut or you end up being nerfed slightly when it unlocks. At the very least, you always start on Sole Bahamut, so even if you do die, you technically skip to your strongest summon. There was so much they could do with Summoner, so much people have been asking for since even before the creation of the Eggy Glamour system, and we just get none of it? It's really unfortunate. Red Mage though, I really like the additions. I'm so glad it didn't end up actually being a new extension to the finisher. It technically is, but making it an OGCD really changes the context for the better. I also really like acceleration double dipping. Grand Impact looks and feels great. I feel like this is purely a beneficial set of additions. Overall though, not much to say. Red Mage is just good fun, and I would say this continues the good fun. At worst, the OGCD count is getting a bit high. Oh, and again, keep in mind the graphical update is not final, but Colin from Noisy Pixel told me to check out how the light catches the Red Mage gear and... Yeah, that's kinda really good. Pictomancer is not here. It's in the dedicated video. Remember, check the description or playlist. Bard is getting exciting quality of life for players of every skill level. The fact that stance songs can be played regardless of having a target is huge. Yeah, you need to be in combat, but that's so good. It's so nice. I haven't been big on Bard, and this will definitely win me back over a bit. Though, I'm not sure how much. The core of the job is still the same. The new animations are great, 
especially Radiant Encore. They gave Bard a bigger orbital laser than Summoner! But yeah, awesome animations don't make a job feel fun. The actual gameplay does, and I'm just not big on Bard. Machinist is another I have very little to say on. It's strong, but I actually am really surprised Excavator isn't any stronger than Chainsaw, or the other 600 potency hits. They're just all 600. Like, okay? I don't know, I thought maybe this one would do a bit more. I figured it would actually be a dedicated place to use one of your reassembles. I'm genuinely surprised it isn't. The America attack is also fun for a novelty at the least. I don't feel like it adds all that much more depth in general, but I didn't try to do a proper rotation on Machinist, with most jobs. Cool new animations, but it just feels like more Machinist. Dancer is the final job, but definitely one of the ones I enjoyed my time with more. Last Dance is just a silly stupid move in general that makes me smile. I feel like that Dancer is also going to be the most interesting job in terms of optimizing and organizing your opener. Getting the little jig of finishing move from Flourish? Does this completely phase out standard step after the opener? Flourish and the buff are both 60 seconds, so... maybe? It's going to be a very interesting time to see how it goes. The new skills are cool, but nothing is quite as defining as another option for standard step. And Dance of the Dawn is really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing how things develop. And those are my opinions on the job changes and other changes coming in Dawn Trail. I likely missed details here or there, as this was my first media tour and wasn't sure how to best budget time for everything plus distractions and eating. Be sure to check out the coverage of other media tour attendees, especially for mains of different jobs. If you want to see my other videos for the media tour, check out my channel page, the playlist, and the links in the description. There's a few of them. Thank you very much for watching, thank you to my patrons for supporting me directly, and thank you very much for inviting me to the media tour. Please leave a rating, comment, share the video around, subscribe to the channel, or if possible even join my Patreon page. You can also join my Discord to talk about FF and other stuff. I also will be streaming all of the Dawn Trail story on Twitch. All of the relevant links are down below in the description. Supporting the channel is key to why I was able to have this opportunity. May the power of Anne and Nidhogg's through waste to your enemies.